ان الحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على اشرف الانبياء وعلى اله واصحابه ومن ولا السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته my brothers and sisters alhamdulillah we are on the concluding part of this khutbah the four steps the four step process to teaching and learning of islam and today we will do the second two steps we did the first two steps last juma which is yatlu alayhim ayatihi wa yuzakkihim the tilawat of the quran and the tazkiyah of the nafs and today inshallah we will do yu'allimuhumul kitab wal hikmah the teaching and learning of quran the meaning of it and the issue of the hadith of muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it's very important for us to focus on this because uh, one of uh, the issues of life the most in- important issue of life is to remember what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about why he created us and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said allazi khalaqa al-mawta wal hayata liyabluwakum ayyukum ahsanu amala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said he is the one who created l- death and created life so that he can see he can test which one of you will do the best deeds and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said wa huwa al-aziz al-ghafur he mentions his power al-aziz and then he says al ghafur and he is the one who forgives and this is the rahma of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rahman ur rahim fi dunya wal akhirah where even though he has the power to punish allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said but he forgives it's not any great thing if we forgive people because in any case we have no power to do anything but when the one who has the power when he forgives and that is a sign of the rahma of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his rahma and we hasten to make tauba as quickly as possible and as often as possible for that reason because how else can we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than other than by returning to him now in this context is the one of the biggest evils of the heart which is al wahan the famous hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he said to the sahaba a time will come when you will be numerous but you will be like the foam of the flood the wording of the hadith before this he said a time will come when the people will call each other to take pieces out of you like people call each other to eat out of a plate so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the sahaba asked rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said ya rasulullah why will that happen and then part of that thing he said because you will be numerous but you will have no weight no significance and he said you will be like the foam on a flood looks very big but it is light like air and then they asked him they asked rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam they said what is the reason for this why is it and imagine these are people who were a handful and they knew what their significance was they changed the world with a handful of people so they said how is it possible that there will be millions like us and instead of them changing the world the world will be chopping them into pieces they said how is this possible and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said because they will have al wahan in the heart and they said wama wahan ya rasulullah they said what is this wahan ya rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said hubbud dunya wa karahiyatul maut he said the love of dunya and the hatred for death now how is this love of dunya how will it come out of the heart by working on it it is the nature of the human being i mean you know many of us have seen this if you have a little grandson who's maybe Two years old or something like that. In on Eid, he comes to the grandfather to get Eidi. So the grandfather will give him a ten rupee note, right? He's very happy. He gets his ten rupee note. He's running away. You call him back. Come here, come here, come here. Just give me that note back. I'll give you a whole wad of hundred rupee notes. I'll give you ten thousand rupees. Not ten rupees. I'll give you ten thousand rupees. What will the kid do? Will he give it back to you? Never. Never. He'll run from that. He just got it from you. he didn't have it he just got it from you without asking he didn't even imagine a two year old kid cannot imagine 10 rupees but when it comes to giving it back he will not give it back even though you are saying i'll give you 10000 you only got 10 i'll give you 10000 because he cannot even conceptualize 10000 now think about that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that when your brother is angry with you nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that if your brother is angry with you and he curses you or whatever he's shouting at you if you keep silent If you give up your right for your brother, he said, "I will guarantee you a palace in the middle of Jannah." Alhamdulillah, we hear, we hear the hadith, we accept the hadith. It is our iman. But do we understand what is a palace in Jannah? 
Do we have any idea about these Palestinians? So what do we do? We say Allah Ta'ala hamar ko do hata, do paama, do chapala gai ko diya. Hai ka ne? Palestinian janna can wait. My brothers and sisters, we have to change our lives if we want to get any benefit out of this deal. Because we don't want to be among those people, may Allah protect us, there are those people who get into trouble because they don't know. But there are other people who get into trouble even though they know. Now what is more retarded, what is more stupid than that, believe me. So let us not fall into that trap. One of the Khulafa of uh, Banu Umayyah, Sulaiman bin Abdul Malik, he went to Makkah for Umrah and uh, he asked people, he said, is there anyone who has met the Sahaba, any of the Tabi'in? He said, is there any Tabi'i here, anyone who has met the Sahaba? So they said yes and they named one of them and Sulaiman bin Abdul Malik said, I want to meet him. So he went to meet him and he asked him, he said, why do we hate death? And this wali of Allah, he said, because you hate to leave a place that you have adorned and go to a place that you have left desolate. He said, all your palaces are here. All your palaces are here. Where is your palace in Jannah? So naturally, if I am living in a palace in this dunya, I don't want to go to a place which is, you know, Allah knows how it is. That is the reason why we have to make sure that we send away. As I always keep saying, every Muslim should be in the real estate business. Every Muslim must be in the real estate business. What is that real estate? In the Jannah. Building palaces in Jannah. Somebody asks you, what, are you, what do you do? I'm in the real estate business. What do you do? I build palaces in Jannah. You know, say, actually say this. Wallah, is this possible? If you have the yaqeen in the word of Allah and in the word of His Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is possible. I'm not, I'm not inventing this, you know this. Issue is the yaqeen. Issue is the yaqeen. And of course, one day we all have to go to the akhirah, whether we like it or not, whether we believe it or not, the time will come when the curtain will be lifted, when the malaika will come, and then we have to leave. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the understanding of this before that day comes. We come to the third step, ta'alimul Qur'an. The best dalil for this is the hadith of, um of Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu, who quoted from, narrated from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where he said, khairu minhum ta'allama al-Qur'ana wa'allamahu. And in another place he said, khairu minhum ta'allama al-Qur'ana aw allamahu. He said, the best of you is the one who teaches the Qur'an and learns it, or the best of you is the one who teaches the Qur'an or learns it. Aw kama khala alayhi salatu wa salam. I want you to give this some thought. What is the meaning of learning? What is the meaning of teaching and learning? Learning means to understand, yes? It means to understand with respect to the Quran, it means to understand the Quran in the language of the revelation. Reading translations as a stopgap until we learn Arabic is fine, but the word of Allah is in Arabic. It's not in English, not in Urdu, not in Telugu, not in Tamil, not in any language. Every translation is the language of the translator. It is not the language of Allah. So that is the reason why I, I always tell people, when people say, Allah said, and then they say it in English, that is a lie. Because Allah did not say that. That is what you said, or your translator said. When you want to say Allah said, then say it in Arabic. Or you say the meaning of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said approximately is. You cannot say Allah said. And then you say something which is not Arabic. Now the problem today is that today, at least in this subcontinent, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, the norm is to teach the Qur'an without learning Arabic. This is the rule, especially with Hivs. The Hivs Madaris, they have made it a rule that the Hafiz must not know Arabic. 
I'm not exaggerating. Go and see. Go and see. I've had numerous arguments with people and you know what they tell me? They say if the boy understands Arabic, he cannot memorize the Quran. Ajeeb, completely senseless argument. So I tell them, I said, then how is it that all the Arabs are memorizing the Quran? They understand Arabic. How is it the Sahaba memorize the Quran? Who were the first Hufas of the Quran? You, me, Indians, Pakistanis, Bangladeshis, who were the first Hufas? The Sahaba is one Rulahi Alayhi Majbain. How did they memorize the Quran? They understood Arabic. How did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa memorize the Quran? Was he a Hafiz or not? So what is this argument to say that the boy cannot understand, cannot memorize if he learns the language? This is just sheer laziness. This is sheer justifying of your own problem, which is that I don't know Arabic and I did hifs because that's how it was done. Now I am the ustad of hifs and the only thing I will look at is the tajweed. And that also may Allah forgive, may Allah forgive us. All of us here in this, in this country, most of us, we are غَيْرِ غير الْمَغْزُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الظَّالِّينَ Imams. So even the, the tajweed is upside down. But anyway, to whatever extent that tajweed. Other than that, meaning we won't teach, not because it is unimportant. Even we know in our heart it's important, but we won't teach it because we're just lazy. We do not want to learn Arabic and therefore we don't want to take the trouble to accept that it is essential for understanding the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me give you a, a very simple example. Supposing I ask you to read the headlines of a French newspaper or a German newspaper. Now all of you who can read English, the script is the same. So you can, you can read the example, you can read the headlines. Yes, same script. Or those of you who know Urdu, if I give you a Farsi newspaper and I tell you read the headlines of the Farsi newspaper, you can read it because the script is the same. So then I tell you, did you read it? Yes, I read it. So what does it say? I have no idea, I have no clue. I said, boss, you just read it. You told me you read it. Yeah, I read it. So what does it say? I have no idea. So what will you say? You will say, well, you know what? You did something. I don't know what you did, but you can't call it reading. So change the word, whatever, invent a word, because there is no word in the, la in, in the language. There is no word in any language, and listen to me carefully, this is what we do with the Quran. There is no word in any language for recognizing the shape of the letter and making a sound with the mouth corresponding to the shape of the letter. If somebody is doing only this, he recognizes the shape of the letter. One straight vertical line is A. A horizontal line slightly curved on both ends with a dot at the bottom is Ba. And so on. Right? He recognizes only the shape of the letter and he is making a sound with his mouth. What do you call this? Give me a word for it. Give me one word for it. Do you call it reading? It's not reading. Reading in every language in the world means to understand what you have read. Yes or no? So now I'm telling you that I'm reading, but I have no clue what has been said. So if you have, if you are a logical person, then you will say, boss, you know what? You did something. Allah knows best, whatever you did. But please don't call it reading because that is not reading. We don't know what it is. Maybe we have to invent a new word for this, but it is not reading. Now, I have had a lot of arguments with people on this matter, with the, especially with the teachers of Hifs. And they take you off into the issue of saying, uh, looking at the Quran is ibadah, touching the Quran with wudu is ibadah, and so on and so on. I said, don't deny any of that, but just tell me one thing. Did the Quran come so that you can look at it? Is the purpose of the revelation that you stare at it? Is the purpose of the revelation that you touch it with wudu? Or is the purpose of revelation that you understand it and you implement it in your life? You ask, you ask, answer this question. And that's the reason why we have this sharad, especially in Ramadan. And what is the sharad? The sharad is called tarawi. Why do I call it a sharad? Because it is the, it is the acting of ibadah. 
you have an imam who is reciting the Quran and you have muqtadeen behind him who are listening to the recitation. Neither the imam nor the muqtadeen have any clue what is being recited. They have no idea what is being said. Is this ibadah? May Allah accept your ibadah. May Allah accept your acting of the ibadah. But my submission to you is stop acting. Make some effort. Make some effort. And at least don't support lies which are told in the name of deen. Make some effort. Try to learn something. At least we'll have some excuse before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, I made some effort, but you know I died. So what to do? Well, I'm here. I made some effort. I know like three words in Arabic. Alhamdulillah. How can we do justice to the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we do not even understand a word of what we are hearing? And that's the reason why, you know why? That is the reason why we stand behind the Imam in Tarawi. The Imam is reciting the beautiful kalam of Allah Jalla wa ala. He is talking about things which shake mountains. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لَوَنْزَلَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ عَلَىٰ جَبَلٍ لَرَعَيْتَهُ خَاشِيَمْ مُتَصَدِّيَمْ مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ But that kalam does nothing to the heart. Because that kalam is dead on the heart. It can crumble a mountain, but it does not do anything to you. Because you have no clue what you are saying. And that's why sometimes, wallahi, I have, I have been in situations where the Hafiz has made mistakes in recitation which completely nullify the Salah. But there is no one to correct him. There is no one to correct him. Nobody to correct him. Because they have no idea what he is saying. He also has no idea what he is saying. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this jahalat and accept your salah. But anyone who understood what the Hafiz, hafiz was reciting would have had to, re to repeat his salah. Because salah is invalid. The salah has become invalid because the man made a mistake. Which completely not just changes the meaning but makes it opposite of what is being said. He is sending the people of Jannah into the hellfire. Or he is taking the people of hellfire and sending them to, jah to Jannah or Allah knows what. Please understand. Khairum min whom? Rasulullah said, the best of you. Why the best of you? Because you are the ones who open the doors leading to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are the one who open the eyes of people to recognize their Rabb. Subhanallah, we accept this definition with regard to every language except the kalam of Allah. I remind myself and you to be careful with the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Secondly, is the issue of the faham of the Qur'an. One is to understand the meaning of the words. The other one is to understand the... In, in Arabic there are two, there ma'ana and faham. In, in, English, in English there is only one meaning, which is understanding. So what to do? It's understanding, if you want to say it with emphasis. Eh? One, is to, one is to know the meaning. This is the meaning. The other one is to see the whole import of it. What is the, what comes behind this, which is part of Asbabun Nuzul, which is, uh, which comes from the, the, uh, when these ayats were revealed and so on and so forth, which is the greater and deeper understanding of the Kalam. For example, the best example of this, for example, is this, is Surah Al-Fatiha. Now, anyone who understands, uh, you know, the, the, at least the Surah Al-Fatiha, I, I guess most of us know the meaning, uh, because even if you don't know Arabic, we would have learned the meaning of that Surah, inshallah. So we know the meaning of the surah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, so on. But is that sufficient? To really get the import of what is happening over there when you are standing and reciting the kalam of Allah, of this particular surah? For that, where do you have to go? You go to the hadith of Qudsi, where Rasulullah sallallahu said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that he has divided the salah between himself and the slaves. And in this hadith, the meaning of salah is al-Fatiha. And, al and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, when my slave says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, I answer him. And I say, Hamdani Rabbi, my slave has praised me. When my slave says, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, I answer him. And I say, Majjadani Abdi. And then my slave says, Iya ka na'budu wa iya, Maliki yawmiddin. My slave accepts the fact that I am the owner of the day of judgment. Then he said, Iyya ka na'budu wa iyya ka Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I respond 
and now whatever my slave says I will give him and then Allah taught us what to ask him ihdina sirat al mustaqim and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further clarified and what is this Sirat al mustaqim I have said this before. Technically speaking, in terms of the meaning of the surah, the surah could have ended here and there would be nothing lost. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to emphasize some other things which we will come to in a minute. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not end the surah with Ihdina Sirat al mustaqim Ameen. Allah did not end it there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further clarified which Sirat al mustaqim what is Sirat al mustaqim Is it something that you invent out of your head? Is it something that your Murshid told you is it something that your professor of islamic studies told you is it something that so and so wrote no sirat alladheena an'amta alayhim ghayri almaghdub alayhim waladdallin which sirat almustaqim which sirat almustaqim yasin wal quran alhakim innaka lamin almursalin Ala siratim mustaqim. That is sirat al mustaqim. Which sirat al mustaqim? The one on which was Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I have always said this in Surah Al Fatiha. You stand and you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the hidayah to be on the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You make salam and you go outside the masjid and you say the hadith has no meaning. You say the Quran is sufficient for me. You are both a liar and an idiot. Because if the Quran is sufficient for you, what did you recite here? The kalam of Ghalib? You recited the Quran and the Quran told you, Ihdina sirat al mustaqim. The Quran told you, Inna kalamin al mursaleen, ala sirat al mustaqim. If that Quran is sufficient for you, go and make tawbah for the kufr that you have been saying all these years. And get back onto the straight line, which is the line, the way of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If somebody thinks that they can reject the way of Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that they will get Jannah, boy, they are living in a pipe dream, the like of which I cannot imagine. So therefore, there is a reading of the Quran, tilawat of the Quran, which is tajweed, wa tilawa, the, the kalam, the tune of it, the pronunciation of it. There is a ma'ana of the Quran, which is the meaning of the words. And then there is a mansha of Allah Jalla wa'ala, which is called ta'wil of the Quran or tafsir of the Quran. Abdullah ibn, ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu said, he narrates, he said, I, he said, I saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam waking up. And this is at 2 o'clock in the morning for tahajjud. And he said, I ran to get water for his wudu. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa woke up and he sat up and he pointed to the sky and he recited the last two ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah. From Aman al-Rasul to the end. And Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu said, when I came with the water for wudu, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam performed wudu. And he said, when he finished wudu, he said he made dua for me. And he said, oh Allah, give this boy the ta'wil of the Quran. Give this boy the ta'wil of the Quran. Give this boy the understanding of the Quran. The mansha of Allah Jalla wa ala. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu was the first mufassir of this kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because of the dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Very important for us, therefore, to understand this. And that is why the grammar of the Quran itself is a miracle. The grammar of the Quran itself is a miracle. But unfortunately, it's all lost to us because we don't understand the meaning of the Kalam. We don't understand the grammar. I ask myself, I remind myself, and you, my brothers and sisters, let us wake up and do some things before it becomes too late. The second issue is responding to the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is there's reading it, there is understanding it, they are understanding it in greater meaning, then there is responding to it, and then there is working on it. Five stages. We just read the Quran, kiss it, touch it to our eyes, put it, wrap it up in nice uh, velvet cloth and stick it on top of the cupboard. That's it, job over. Eh? Khatam. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked questions in the Quran. In one place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayyuhal insanu ma gharraka bi rabbikal kareem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, O oh, you, O oh, insan, Ya ayyuhal insan, O oh, human beings, how is it that you deny and how is it that you turn away from your Rabb who is Kareem? What is the answer to this? What is the answer to this? Another place Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, كَيْفَ تَكْفُرُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَكُنْتُمْ أَمْوَاتًا فَأَحْيَاكُمْ ثُمَّ يُمِيتُكُمْ ثُمَّ يُحْيِيكُمْ ثُمَّ إِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, how can you deny the one when you were dead, when you did not exist and he gave you life. And today all that you are is because of what he gave you. And one day he will kill you and then he will resurrect you again. And then to him is your return. How can you deny? Listen to this kalam, subhanAllah, I tell you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me the, the, the opportunity to go and pray behind who understand the Quran. The pain in the voice of the Qari. That's why I always say, the tune of Qirat is the understanding of the Kalam by the Qari. It's not a rag. He's not singing, I, I, you know, uh, rag darbari or something. The tune in the, in the, in the, in the voice, the tune in the, of, the, of the recitation is what? It is the understanding of the Qari. So he says, Kaifa takfurun. He's asking, how is it possible? How is it possible? Kaifa takfurun. In another place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Alayhi sallahu bi kafin abda. Allah said, Is Allah not sufficient for his slave? Is Allah not sufficient for you? What is the answer? But the slave is standing behind him. Kab khatam hota ki kya hai Wali sahab, the raj khich rahe zada. The heart therefore is filled with fear and all sorts of junk. Because the kalam of Allah, the noor of Allah cannot enter the heart. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called this teaching of the kalam of Allah, this invitation, <coughs> the best deed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلَ مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ Which is a better deed, which is the better speech than the one, than the speech of the one who invites towards Allah. How is the kalam, the invitation to Allah? See this. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the da'wah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa was to invite to Allah. His da'wah was to recite the Qur'an. Anytime somebody came to him and, and they asked him, what is this deen of yours? He would recite the Quran. Anyone come and say, came to him and said, what do you say? He would recite the Quran. This was the da'wah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He did not explain. He used to recite. After recitation, then maybe he would explain. He did not say, your Rabb wants you to do this, this, this. No, no, no. He would recite the kalam of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala as received. And I explained all of that this last Jumma, so I won't repeat that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this in the, in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the time <coughs> and this ayah, the asbab and nuzul of this. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is coming back from Taif. He is being injured. He is being beaten. All sorts of things happened to him. He made the dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he left from there. Now he is on his way to Makkah. Uh, he, st he stood up to pray. When he is reciting the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent some of his makhluk to listen to that kalam. Allah sent the jinn to listen to him. There was nobody else. There was no one there. Except Zaid bin Haritha and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the scene. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Wa'idh sarafna ilayka nafaram minal jinni yastami'oon al-Quran. Falamma hadaruhu qalu ansitu. فَلَمَّا خُدِيَ وَلَّوْا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِمْ مُنْذِرِينَ قَالُوا يَا قَوْمَنَا إِنَّا سَمِعْنَا كِتَابًا أُنْزِلَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مُوسَىٰ مُصَدِّقًا 
We do not deny any of your name. And Rasulullah said they were better than you. Subhanallah. It's a great rahma of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the Sahaba are not with us. It is a great rahma of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not with us. Because if he was with us, imagine what would happen. It is the mercy of Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept us and our deeds hidden from his Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If he was here today, what would he say to his ummah who recites the kalam without understanding, who listens to the Quran without understanding, who advertise completion of the whole Quran in one night, Shabina, who advertise completing of the whole Quran in three days and people make elaborate arrangements and the Qurra go and they recite the Quran like an express train with no riyat of no tajweed, nothing. The, their whole object of the Qurra and the Muqtadeen is to complete that kalam as quickly as possible and they think they are earning benefits from this. Inna lillahi wa inna They are earning sin. They are earning the anger of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Qiyamah specifically he said La tuharrik bihi lisanak li ta'jala bihi Allah said do not move your tongue fast when you recite the Quran. Do not do it fast. A sahabi came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tell me I want to recite a lot of Quran. And Rasulullah told him a quantity, one his or one Jews. He said, no, I can do more. And I'm not sure, I think it is, this is, this is about, Abdul, about Abu Ayyub Ansari, Allah Alam, but one of the Sahaba. Out of his, his desire. So Rasulullah said, he said, do two and three and four. And finally Rasulullah said, do not complete the Quran in less than three days, meaning ten Jews per day. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a very long life. And in his old age, he used to say, I wish I didn't ask this of Rasulullah He said, because now for him it became fard. Nabi Sallallahu said, do it. So he said, now in this age for me to recite 10 Jews in one day is very difficult. But he said, I brought this on myself. My brothers and sisters, do not do injustice to the Quran. It is not even required for you to listen to the whole Quran in Tarawi. Please understand this very clearly, the masala of this. There is no compulsion in Islam that the whole Quran has to be completed in Tarabi. Number one. Alhamdulillah, if you do it, this is good. This is a source of barakah. But it, is no, it does not mean your Tarabi is not uh, done or it is not valid. Nothing. Insist that the Imam must recite properly with the adab of the Quran. And if that Imam does not recite properly, go to a place where the Imam will recite properly. Alhamdulillah, in this masjid, this is a rule. The Imam does not recite fast. And we make it very clear to people. If you are one of those who wants the Imam to recite fast, then this is not the masjid you want to pray Tarawih in. Period. Go find yourself someplace. We will not do Tawheen of the Quran to please you. Very, very clear. The Quran in this masjid will be recited according to the adab of the kalam. Do not do this to the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Respond to the Quran. The Quran is a living kalam. It is not some dead mantra to be recited for barakah. Finally, we come to the last of the four step process, which is al-hikmah. We have the famous hadith of Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu anha. When somebody came and asked her to tell them something about the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu anha said, don't you read the Quran? And the man said, yes, I read the Quran. He said, that is the life of Rabbi Sallallahu He said, Rasulullah Sallallahu was the walking Quran. Today, this is another one of the many injustices that we do to this deen of Allah. And I'm talking about the people who run Madaris and Darul Ulums. There is, they do not teach Sirah. Go look at the Dars, go, go look at the syllabus. You are the people who sponsor these institutions. You give out money, but you don't have the sense to go and check what is happening. The syllabus does not have seerah. The only seerah they learn is what they learn when they are reading hadith. 
or what they learn when they are reading some tafsir. There is no special subject of seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Whereas the seerah is the tafsir of the Quran. It is the living expression of the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Al hikmah. The Sahaba learned the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The son of Saad ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu said, our father used to gather us together and talk to us about the maghazi of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That was the word they used for the seerah, maghazi, al-maghazi. He used to tell us about Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam and, and his and his life. There is not a single Sahabi who said the Quran is sufficient for me. Understand this. All the the great fitna that is being spread in the city by the murtadin and the kuffar who have left Islam by denying Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam there is not a single sahabi who ever said that the kalam of allah is sufficient there is not a single sahabi who ever said that the life of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is not required there is not a single sahabi who denied any of the ahadith of nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam my understanding is that those sahaba were on haq and my understanding is the one who speaks against them is in the hell fire when i want to be resurrected and i'm asking you this question keep the mind and the face and the name of these individuals in your in your imagination and ask yourself when you die and you are resurrected do you want to be resurrected with abu bakar and omar and uthman and ali and al and talha and zubair and abdurrahman ibn auf radiyallahu anhum or do you want to be resurrected by these sons of shayateen which one pick make your choices stop inviting them to your houses don't accept their invitations if they work for you kick them out because they bring lanat on your head by their presence in your in your organizations not only is this fitna there's no one who has the guts to even speak about this fitna la hawla wala quwwata illa billahi al-aliyyul azim we want to reinvent this deen in our own model we want to reinvent this deen and make this deen what we want this deen to be like remember very clearly islam is what was brought by muhammadur rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam if anyone brings one word one letter different from muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam it will be rejected what is the hadith every juma i say it from this member and every juma every imam says it for every member what is the hadith we hear اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسبي وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار او كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام every innovation is in the hell fire every innovator is in the hell fire everyone who supports innovations and innovators is in the hell fire denying of hadith is a bid'a it is haram it is kufr it makes you a murtad i don't know how i can be clearer than this and that is the reason why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did a very funny thing very peculiar thing in his kalam to establish the importance of hadith to establish the presence of the existence of and the stab and the importance of wahi ghair matlu you know what allah did allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all the major umur of deen in all the major arkan of deen in all the major matters of deen which take people which are the boundary conditions which take people out of islam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his kalam was completely vague allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just gave the order and he did not explain how this order is to be carried out for example allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said wa aqimu as-salah so now for example may allah protect me if i am one of those murtaddin who says the kalam of allah is enough for me so what do i say aqimu as-salah all right khalas now how is this to be done how is salah to be established how what am i supposed to do should i stand on one leg at 4 o'clock in the morning should i go and stand in neck deep water in a flowing stream should i do salah in a state of sirsarsan on my head 
put my head on the ground. Should I pray Salah starting in the sajda? Because to me, I'm standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can I be standing? Fall. My, lo my logic tells me this. I'm standing before Allah. How can I be standing? What do I do? Go down. So start the Salah in sajda. If Salah is so important, how come Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never told us how to do it? Think about this. So what did Allah do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Aqimu Salah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught his Nabi how it is to be established. So what did his Nabi say? Sallu kama ra'aytumuni yusallu. He said, pray as you see me pray. He did not say, pray as Allah told you to pray. Did Allah, what did Allah say? Pray as Allah told you to pray? He said, pray as you see me pray. Sallu kama ra'aytumuni yusalli. And what did the Habib of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what did he do? He stood up and he said, Allahu Akbar. I won't go into the detail of this. You know the detail of this. Tell me, even the most jahil of the Muslims, Alhamdulillah, inshallah, none of them are here. If someone prays salah in a way other than that of Rasulullah sallam, if he changes the format of the salah, if he recites in the salah in an order different from Rasulullah sallam, if he does not begin the salah with Surah Al-Fatiha, he does something else, is that salah valid? Is it accepted? So how come this salah is so important and what did, Allah, what did Rasulullah sallam said? What did he say about this Allah? How important is it? He said, Bainana ahad al ahadul ladhi Bainana wa bainahum as salah Wa man aradaha faqad kafara He said the differentiation, the ahad, the covenant, the boundary between them and us, between the non-Muslims and the Muslims is salah Wa man aradaha faqad kafara The one who leaves it has left Islam. The one who denies it has left Islam. Something which is so important Hukum of Allah, Aqimus Salah, Allah does not explain it. Leaves it to his Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You tell them what to do. Sallu kama ra'aytumuni yusalli. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, pay zakat. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said to his Nabi, quz min namwalihim sadaqa. Take from their mal the sadaqa, the zakat. How much zakat is to be paid? What is the zakat on agricultural products? What is the zakat on factory products? Is there any zakat if, on, on goods in transit? Is there any zakat in goods in my warehouse? Do I pay zakat on gold and silver? How, how about platinum? Is there a zakat on platinum? How about a diamond? I have a, I have a diamond ring, a solitaire. The gold value of that ring is $10. The value of the solitaire is $10,000. How much zakat do I pay? I have 50 grams of gold, I have 500 gram, grams of gold, I have one, one gold biscuit and I have a barrel, a 200 liter barrel filled with diamonds. Which do I pay zakat on? Please find all this in the Quran for me. Then I say, I do not pay zakat. If you do not pay zakat, what happens to you? Abu Bakr Siddiq comes behind you with a sword. That is what happens to you. Because Abu Bakr Siddiq understood the deen slightly better than you. So he knew that the one who leaves zakat, the one who refuses to pay zakat is a murtad. Therefore, Abu Bakr Siddiq draws his sword. Allah left it vague. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, make hajj of the bayt of Allah. Man istata ilayhi sabila. If you have the means to do so. All right, ya Rab. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik. I am ready. I am coming for hajj. I enter the haram. Now what? Now what? Please find for me the arkan of hajj in the Quran. What did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said? What did he say? Huzu anni manasikakum. He said, learn from me your manasik. Learn from me how to do hajj. When is hajj to be done? Why is Hajj standing in Arafah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying do Hajj to the bait of Allah? Which bait of Allah is in Arafah? How come the Hajj? Hajj is Arafah. If you leave Arafah, there is no Hajj. And somebody says, no, no, no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Hajj 
to Baitullah. So therefore, these people going to Arafah, let them go. In any case, they get stuck in traffic jam. I am going to sit in the haram. I will have the haram to myself. I will make tawaf all day, all night. I will pray all my salat in the hatim. Absolutely, my hajj is complete. Is your hajj complete? You have not only not done hajj, but if you made the knee of hajj and you do this thing, then you have committed a sin. With the knee of hajj, if you go and then sit in the, into the haram instead of going to, into uh, Arafah deliberately, you have committed a sin. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to establish the azmat of his Nabi. He wants to establish the presence of Wahi Ghair Matlu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Najm, وَمَا يَنْتِخُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَىٰ in Surah Al-Hashr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Take whatever my Nabi gives me. The meaning of the ayah. What did Allah say? وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَقُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ Allah said, Whatever my Nabi gives, take it. Whatever he tells you to leave, leave it. No arguments, no logic, no nothing. He tells you do this. He tells you stand on your head. You stand on your head. Finish. Period. Now what do we do if shaitan has blinded us? Eh? Subhanallah. My brothers and sisters, in closing, let me remind you of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah An-Nisa. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took an oath by his own majesty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Fala wa rabbika la yu'minuna hatta yuhakkimuka fi ma shajara baynahum he said, but no, by your Rabb, who is saying this? The Rabb is saying this. He is taking an oath by himself, by his rububiyat. He said, by your Rabb, they have no faith. La yu'minun. What do you call someone who has no faith? A non-Muslim, a kafir, a murtad. La yu'minun. Who is, whose fatwa is this? Sheikh bin Bas? This is the fatwa of Jalla Jalla wa'ala. This is the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, by your Rabb. But no, by your Rabb. Again, grammar of the, of, the, of the Quran. Second time, third time, emphasizing this. They can have no faith until they make you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa their judge in all disputes between them. Is he saying in all religious disputes, in all theological disputes, in all disputes about madhab, and the rest of your life you can lead whichever way you like? Is that what Allah is saying here? In all disputes. And they can have no faith by your Rabb. No, but by your Rabb they can have no faith until they make you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Judge in their judge in all disputes between themselves and listen carefully. They and they find within themselves no resistance against your decisions, and they accept those decisions with complete submission. You know, and I know that there is no ism, there is no sin, and there is no punishment for what we think and what we feel. Yes. So how come Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making what you think and feel not just punishable, but he's saying even if they have in their heart something against your decision, they have left Islam. Forget about speaking it. Forget about doing prachar of it. Forget about sending emails all over the world about it. Even if you feel that, even if you think that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they are not mu'mineen. I'm not saying this for you to go and pronounce fatwa for people. I'm saying this, let us examine our, in our own hearts. When a hadith comes to us, when a hukum of Rasulullah comes to us, and our own nafs is there, which one do we give precedence to? Which one do we give precedence to? I don't want you to realize this when you are dying, that's why I'm telling you now. My brothers and sisters, I would like to end by reminding myself and you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always does things for a reason. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed a whole methodology and if his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam practically demonstrated it and if that led to success, 
then it is simple enough for us to understand that if today we want success, that is the methodology that we have to follow. The method methodology that his generation followed. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his help in being able to live this life in accordance with his orders and in accordance with the sunnah of his Habib Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept this from us. Wa sallallahu ala nabil kareem wa ala alihi wa sahibi ajmain. Bi rahmatika ya rahman rahim.